great movie. I saw it myself a few months ago. But uh, if you just bear with me a few minutes, I just want to say a few things about what you should be looking for and thinking about. And this uh, I've got shown here is basically the essence of what's going on at the LHC. Um, these two balls approaching each other are basically a, 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 a sketch of what protons are. And we now know that protons consist of things inside of them called quarks. So that we got U, U, and D in each one of those. Those are, stand for up and down quarks. Um, the uh, LHC has done an amazing job. They've figured out how to take two protons and slam them into each other a billion times a second. Okay? And they've done it uh, for maybe a, a total of roughly a solid year so far, which means they've got basically 10 million billion collisions of things like this. And out of that many collisions, we've used about 1,000 events to discover the Higgs boson. Okay? So I think this is, this is a kind of amazing thing. And uh, you know, it's, it's, it wasn't easy. All these thousands of people were actually doing lots of difficult things. Second slide, I'm not going to go over this, all these different things here. You'll recognize maybe the electron in the first column with an E. There's a photon in the fourth column, the second from the top. That's the gamma. These are, that's a particle of light. The electron, as you know, is in atoms and electricity. The rest of these things are weird things like quarks and neutrinos and muons and tau leptons. Uh, there's also the gluon, the photon, the Z boson, the W boson. These are all involved with uh, being the material in the world around you. And the fourth column, the gluon, photon, et cetera, are responsible for the interactions these particles have with each other. The lone piece at the upper right with an H is a Higgs boson. And that's a particle that was proposed to exist 50 years ago. And it was one of the early ingredients of something that became known as the standard model of particle physics, which has had enormous success but we just could not find that missing piece. And the missing piece is everything, because as you'll learn from the movie, it is basically the piece that confers mass on all the particles. If particles don't have mass, the world around us doesn't exist. The Higgs boson is a, is a little excitation of something even more important. It's called the Higgs field. And the Higgs field is everywhere in the universe, and it may even be involved in the beginning of the universe and the end of the universe. So lots going on there, theoretically. Experimentally, just, as, just to orient you where the LHC is, it's 300 feet underground. You see that ring there? That's a 27-kilometer uh, tunnel, which has the protons circulating in opposite directions. They're brought to collide in four different places. Atlas and CMS are the large experiments where the Higgs boson was discovered. The top of the surface, we have the CERN laboratory, Geneva's over on the left, the mountains of the Alps are on the left, the Jura Mountains on the right. Um, but the, uh, uh, the, the, the LHC is buried. Atlas, which I'll show you next, is also buried. It's in a cavern underground. You'll see lots of pictures of this thing, but you won't see much because it's hard to get farther than 10 feet away from anything unless you stand where those little people are standing. See, this, the lady's got a red dress on up there to get some scale there. You'll see a lot of pictures there, and those are in the, what are called the big wheel regions because that's the only place you can actually see anything. I think there's a lot of footage of this thing being put together. It's like a, it's like a bottle in a, uh, it's like a ship in a bottle, piece by piece had to be lowered down a shaft and assembled together. Okay, the last thing I want to show and I'm not going to try to explain this. This is one event that we believe was caused by Higgs boson. It's a, it's a recreation using something called an event display. All those colored objects correspond to different particle detectors being hit by radiation, firing. The, the blue cones going to the left and right are things called particle jets. The red line corresponds to a particle called a muon. The green line to an electron. If you look in the upper right, that's a view from the end of Atlas, looking at something called the inner tracker. And that thing has about 1,000 particles in it. Out of that 1,000 particles, we have to extract information to find evidence for the Higgs boson. Okay, so there's lots of really challenging, difficult things going on here. I think the movie does a great job of conveying the excitement, 
the enthusiasm, the scope, and the scale, and also the theoretical implications. So I, uh, as I said, I think you'll have a good time. I'll be here to answer questions afterwards and uh, enjoy the movie. So do I. Okay, so I'm uh, happy to a answer any questions, and if not, I'll ask you questions because I'm actually curious what you thought about it. Yeah. Is this Nobel Prize for experiment and theory? I mean, the other fellow didn't come through as clearly as Higgs. Well, there were there, there, a person named Brew had died, and, and, uh, and Higgs and Engler and Brew. Higgs had wrote a paper, and Engler and Brew had written a paper. Um, there were others, three others that had written the paper, but you can only give a uh, double praise to three people. Uh, there were actually other people before them that, so was, there's was a lot of controversy about who should get it. And um, so I think the decision was made the first two papers, and uh, you know, the, the two of those three people were alive. So no experimental uh, award. It's hard to give a double prize to 6,000 people. And, um, but it's interesting, if you read the Nobel citation, it's the only citation that ever uh, mentions experiments that got the data for which the theory Nobel Prize was given. So it's it kind of interesting. Um, yep. So where do we stand now? It's 2014. Uh, what's the, uh, what are the rumors in well, the community? So, so the LHC will turn on again in six months. It's been off. That, that magnet problem. So what had happened was there was a uh, there's a defect in the way all the magnets were made that wasn't recognized, and that caused a short circuit, which caused the 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 uh, all the magnetic field energy in the coil to get dumped into the helium, and that caused an explosion. Anyway, they they patched things up. But the reason they ran at half the energy was because they were worried about having another such problem. And it, it's amazing it worked just fine for the two years, but the last year and a half they've been off fixing all the magnets so now in six months they can go up to the nearly the full energy. The full energy is supposed to be 14 TeV. They're going to 13 because they're still a little, <laughs> they're a little nervous. Um, but things are looking good and all the detectors have been uh, uh, fixed up and gotten into good shape. There's some new detectors that have been installed and the, the rate at which the collisions happen will be increased by a factor of maybe two. So People are actually quite excited. The next um, two to three years will be another discovery period where we have more energy, so there could be threshold effects. Maybe particles were not made before because we didn't have enough energy to make them, and so just crossing that threshold can all of a sudden turn things on. Um, so people are still excited about finding supersymmetry, dark matter, measuring the properties of this this thing, so in the beginning we used to, we were told to call it the particle that appears to be like the Higgs boson, but everyone's calling it the Higgs boson now. I should say that since that, the data were shown in the movie here, there were more data was taken and they have actually a lot more information now and the thing even looks more and more like the Higgs boson. All the properties are really quite similar to what Peter Higgs had predicted. Um, but it's possible there are other types of Higgs particles, and so we're just waiting to see what happens. You know, experimentalists, we have a different attitude than the, most of the people you saw up there. Um, we just, you know, want to find out what's there, and so we're just, we're just excited and working hard. And I think, you know, the next three years could be also just as, maybe even more exciting, because Higgs was expected. It's unfortunate that most of the theorists did not want it to come as it was predicted, and, but uh, it's, it's, it's actually quite natural what happened, I think. Yep, next. Anybody? Steve, can yes. you tell us what you did? You worked on the at Atlas? Yeah, so I worked on the Atlas. So I don't know if you remember the beginning, there were some action shots with these wheel things moving. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I built those. <laughs> so, <laughs> so I really, I love the movie mainly for that, I, I have to say. <laughs> um, so I, I helped design and build the, the muon chambers, and those were uh, some of the, the components of the muon system. And um, uh, I'm also quite proud to say that during the 2012 data taking, when most of the data was taken that discovered the Higgs, 
a physicist that works for me was actually in charge of running the entire muon system, so he was in the control room making sure all that worked out. So I was getting daily reports. And one thing you don't really get a sense of here is how, for the two years the data was coming in, how everyone was just doing such an extraordinary job keeping the machine running, all the detectors running. As a run coordinator had mentioned, it's critical to keep the data flowing in at a high rate and also to high quality. So every time there's a problem with the detector, it had to be fixed really fast. I mean, 20 minutes, you know, you don't get to wait till next week to fix it. Really fast, you have to fix these things. And uh, it's, it's quite a, I've never been in a project, obviously no one has, but this, I'm so proud to have been on Atlas because for 3,000 people to work so well together with actually very little communication. When I was building muon chambers, I had a group in Boston that was building muon chambers, and we sent them to CERN. I hardly ever talked to anybody else outside of Boston about it. People around the world were doing that. All these parts showed up. They were installed. They pretty much all worked. We had no spare parts. I mean, Joe and Condell had made a joke, but you know, if you realize there was no spare CMS, <laughs> there was not one spare muon chamber out of 1,200. So if one didn't work, but they all worked. So it's, it's real, I was really quite proud of the whole process. And with thousands of experimentalists, there, was, there were no delusions of getting Nobel Prizes. Everyone just did it because they just trying to figure out how nature works. So it's really, for me, this is a wonderful experience all, all together. I'd been on other projects where they were led by people who wanted to win Nobel Prizes. Was, I thought it was interesting, Demopolis, this business about only having three people, so no problem with the Nobel Prize. I didn't really like that attitude very much, I have to say, because that's not, it shouldn't be about the Nobel Prizes. It should be about learning about the universe. Anyway, but also, I, I also want to say what else I was proud about. Joe and Candela, the spokesperson for CMS, he uh, worked for me right out of graduate school. He was my postdoc for a few years, so I was really proud of him also. So I, I felt the only thing I didn't like I was nervous as hell when they made the announcement of the discovery because that was based on 13 events for what's referred to as a golden channel, okay? You, don't, you never saw, showed the 13 events. Billions and billions of collisions, 13 events, and they made, based the discovery on it. Since then, as I said with all the other data, it's a much more compelling discovery. I'm not nervous anymore, but I was really quite, quite nervous that they, uh, you know, something went wrong, and you know, it wasn't quite right. Okay, any, other? yep. How could they get uh, five sigma certainty with only 13 events? Well, it's amazing what you can do with 13 events. If the, the way it works, suppose, so here, that's a, that's a really good question, because what, another thing you don't get a sense of here is background. So every, in every scientific experiment, there's signal and there's background. And you really don't know your signal unless you know your background, because the signal is something above what you would expect without some new thing. And the, uh, most of our effort in doing data analysis at the LHC is understanding background. You spend you know, huge effort, huge computer programs running all the time. Anyway, we expected four events, and we saw 13. And there's this rule, if you, if you see you know, if you expect four of some standard thing, the, the error that is the square root of the number. So, this, this, so one sigma would have been two, and we saw 13, that's nine divided by two, that's four and a half standard deviations for that channel. There's a, this, the channel that the Higgs decay to the gamma rays provided extra information. So all together, we had uh, over five standard deviations. Now I should say that we have more events, uh, the muons are eight sigma, the gammas are six sigma. So we've discovered now in four different decay modes. So it's much more powerful now, the result. Yep, anybody else? Yeah. In academics, sharing credit is often problematic for tenure and promotion and other things like that. Yeah. Could you speak a little bit about how credit has been shared and how credit has been awarded uh, within your own institution and where the funding sources came from? Right. So. Uh, Everyone in the U.S. is funded by DOE and NSF, and we do, in fact, have two um, untenured faculty members uh, at BU. One of them works with the Atlas group, and then we also have a CMS group. Uh, a, a woman works in that group. Um, 
the, the LHC experiments are very uh, conscientious about putting forward young people. I mean, you saw it here, a lot of young people were interviewed and were talking. And um, they are the ones that get priority for giving talks. Older people like me don't really, I and mean, we don't need to give talks to get, you know, I mean, we've got tenure, we're going to retire soon. So everyone do, does, uh, puts a lot of effort into getting them recognition. There's all sorts of uh, awards and prizes. And pe when people are uh, evaluated for promotion and for being hired, they get letters from spokespersons who I think are pretty fair about you know, discussing what they did that was critical. You, you have to realize these experiments, they, there's a lot of people, but 30 years ago there, were, there was like 500 experiments, each having five people. Okay? So, you know, these atlas is like, there's so many different parts of it, it's effectively 500 different things with a few people on each one. So it's not that much different, actually. Anyway, uh, I think it's, you know, it's done pretty well, and, uh, you know, people are getting tenure, they're getting hired, they're getting credit, they're getting recognition, and it's, uh, it just requires that everyone be willing to be honest about who does what, and not having people standing there saying, well, this is my experiment, you know, I deserve all the credit. Any federal funding involved? Yeah, so the Department of Energy and National Science Foundation funded the American part of it. And the total U.S. contribution to the LHC in equipment was uh, $600 uh, million. And, oh, I don't know how much goes in per year for salaries, but it's, uh, it's a fraction of the total budget. It's not a huge fraction, actually. So, yeah, a lot of money has gone into it, no doubt about it. And, uh, but the U.S. is a, you know, one of uh, many nations. So I think the U.S. is actually the largest single nation in terms of putting money into the LHC. Um, so yeah, it's not cheap, that's for sure. Yep. What is your sense of the future of big science, multinational uh, cooperation on projects like this? It's tough. Uh, you know, it's, uh, it, a lot depends on you know, if we see exciting things in the next three years, a lot depends on uh, people's enthusiasm, your enthusiasm. I mean, is it worth it? We, you know, we will tell you, oh yeah, it's worth it, but we don't know. We just, of course, we want the money to do it because we're really curious and we want to know these things, but it's, it's not our decision. Um, uh, you know, there will, there are, it's impossible not to have various technological spin-offs because just getting a bunch of people working on things. Right now, we're, we're crunching data at a rate much higher than pretty much anyone's ever done before. So we're learning how to do that. And that'll be important for you know, uh, genome sequencing for curing diseases. So I mean, we're learning things that will, will trickle down to other fields. Um, the, I, as I said, it's, it wasn't as bad. In fact, it was pretty satisfying working on an experiment this big for me. I mean, I, you know, I, I, there, the, I think, uh, though, younger people tend to be put off by that, and rightly so, I imagine. So it's a, it's a difficult question to answer, just like, you know, what does the Higgs mean? We don't really know. Um, you know, the, the, the truth is learning things is very difficult, time-consuming, expensive, you know, my personal opinion is we don't have to learn everything. <laughs> I mean, we should be balanced in where we put funding. And so um, I have my own personal opinions. And, you know I, I, you know, I think we should all have our personal opinions and make our congressmen aware of those. How important is this to you? And that's, I think that's the question. And we're, so, I, so let me ask some, someone to answer this question. Based on the movie, do you think this is important to you? I mean, is this something that, yeah. Yes. <laughs> okay, good. Okay, good, because we need, we, we hope people are excited by this. And it's, you know, it's hard. The, the theorists, I think, did a good job hyping things up, but maybe it's a little bit uh, too much, you know, I would say. Um, the, the fact is it hit, this thing hit the theoretical community pretty hard. I, I have a very good friend who was one of the leaders in, the, um, in a particular model called Technicolor, and that was a very viable alternative to supersymmetry. It's dead now because of the Higgs. And he is, you know, for a while he was very, very unhappy about it. And, you, you know, it's one of these things where he spent decades. And that work, he was wrong, you know, and it's not, not his fault. Who knows what's going to happen? So it's, um, it, it's, it's very stressful, I think, for the theoretical community. They're still trying to figure out what to do next. What, yeah. 
Sorry, I can't help but raise the obvious question. Yeah. Uh, we're facing some of the most serious sustainability challenges in the history of our species in the coming decades. I think most people in this room would agree with that. Do we need to use that $600 million for this now? Yes. <laughs> May I answer that? Please. <laughs> the Dallas Super Collider, which was interfered with by politics, yeah. had already spent a billion dollars, I think, before Two. it was canceled. Two billion. Two. So our own political system is the problem, not the research into physics. No, I agree with that. I agree with that. No problem there. Well, Bill, so I, you know, I, again, I can't decide these things, but I agree with you. I mean, I, my, I, I personally feel that the, um, the Earth is a much more fascinating thing to study than the Higgs boson. You know? <laughs> In fact, I'm trying to figure out ways I can think about the Earth, you know, using the skills I've developed making things for that. So, you know, I think they're all valuable, but you know, you're probably right because we don't need, and I'm not saying don't fund research for the Higgs boson, because I need that, right? <laughs> Please. But, but I think we should, um, we should try to approach these real problems we have in the world as sensibly with the team spirit that we've shown that we can do in the LHC uh, to, to deal with these issues you know, that our future really is critically dependent on. So I think that the fact, as I mentioned earlier, we, we have thousands of people working together with this mission. Without, we don't, have, we don't have a military structure. We don't have people telling us what to do. We're just sort of like this, this self-organizing entity that went out and discovered the Higgs boson. Um, I think we could have that sort of thing that could deal with these sustainability issues, too. So I, I, we just have to figure out how to do this self-organization. I mean, a lot less money is actually spent on, on these things you're talking about. Yep. Could you explain a little bit more about the Higgs field? So, you know, again, so I don't know much about the Higgs field. I mean, they, you probably got more from them than I could give you. I, what I, so what I will, so what do I know? Well, I, you know, I know we discovered a particle that had the properties of this thing called the Higgs boson, okay? And that particle was proposed as part of a model which involved this Higgs field. I also know how, the, based on the data we've seen, how the Higgs particle interacts with other particles and how there is a definite mass dependence on these interactions. Okay. If you put all this together and you, 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 you do use some common sense, well, it makes sense that the model's pretty good. And the model basically you know, it says that the Higgs field, by having an enhanced interaction of the, that field with certain particles, that gives these particles the property of inertial mass. Inertial mass means, like, if you took high school physics, F equals ma, the bigger the inertial mass, the harder it is to push on it. So often they have this analogy of the Higgs feels like molasses, okay? If it's hard to push certain things through the molasses, that's sort of like the, the corresponds to heavy particles having a hard time moving through the Higgs field. It doesn't explain why certain particles have more mass than other particles, but it does you know, indicate there's some relationship between the Higgs field and mass. For me, the most interesting thing is we've shown for the first time there's a fundamental force other than gravity that the force of the interaction depends on the inertial mass. And I think that, that actually is quite fascinating, independent of any models. Okay, so it's, you know, there's mysteries. There's dark energy, there's dark matter, there's gravity, there's a Higgs field. They may all be related to each other. Yep. Can the can the Higgs, like, kind of like how, how gravity can source itself, um, can the Higgs essentially uh, kind of act on itself? I'm not sure if that makes sense. Yeah, I mean, the mass of the Higgs is due to the interaction of the Higgs with these other things. And one of the things they're worried about is this whole instability issue. and what's holding the Higgs together, and the Higgs also interacts with very heavy particles, like there's something called the top quark, which has a mass of 175 uh, GeV, which is heavier than the Higgs, and people don't really understand why that, why the Higgs can interact with that without having the whole thing kind of blow up, and this instability issue. I mean, this, these are the theoretical, so that I, I should say that, in my opinion, the theoretical issues come from the models 
But the theoret just because there are theoretical issues or challenges or problems, like the instability thing, doesn't mean there really are. I mean, we're, you know, we, we're still here. We haven't blown up. You know, the universe you know, seems to be in pretty good shape, actually. So uh, my suspicion is everything is just fine. We just don't know a lot of things yet. Okay. But it's, uh, yeah, it, you get, so you've got to distinguish between what's known and what's speculated based on theorists' calculations and models. Anybody else? Yes. Well, I just uh, wanted to comment uh, that I thought the movie was uh, put together uh, very well uh, and the, 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 without being too uh, uh, esoteric with the theory uh, and getting to see that there were real people uh, that physicists are not uh, like your next door neighbor to be a physicist. Uh, <laughs> Ordinary people, uh, and uh, I, I hope you have good uh, success at popularizing uh, physics. Uh. Okay, well, thank you. I think it is true that we are, there's a lot of excited people, really well intentioned people who just want to learn about things. And we do, we need to work harder actually on, you know, this is a great kind of event because sharing it in this kind of a forum, I think, is a really good way of, of getting that across. I think the movie was actually quite, quite good. Uh, at bringing out the human aspects of this whole thing. Anybody else? Don't forget to vote tomorrow. Yeah, I gotta <laughs> drive back home. <laughs> Hope it doesn't snow. <laughs> thank you. Okay, thank you all. <laughs>